what is potentially coming through that pipeline. Uh, Cecile Schofield is going to talk to us a little bit about LNG export, trucks and trains, and danger. Mm -hmm. Cecile. I love talking about liquefied natural gas. I've been, I've been fighting for the responsible siting of, of liquefied natural gas facilities for probably going on 15 years now. I'm from a little uh, town in Massachusetts called Fall River, where Lizzie Borden made us famous. And, and we fought Hess, a uh, giant Hess company. Boy, if, if there's no better example how when citizens get together, you really can do something. Well, we finally, you know, rode them out of town, but it took us like 11 years and over $2 million in legal fees. But anyway, what is liquefied natural gas? How many people here know what liquefied natural gas is? Okay, good, thank you. I brought a little uh, crude experiment uh, to show you, to demonstrate how uh, LNG is made. Uh, and it is crude, but you'll get the point. Uh, so you have natural gas coming through a pipe. Pipeline. I'm losing my flammable gas vapor cloud, <laughs> which is okay because that will make a valid point. <laughs> okay, so you have this natural gas coming through a pipe. It goes into a natural piece of apparatus called a train, not choo-choo, a train, piece of equipment. Two things happen in that, in that uh, piece of equipment. Uh, one, all the impurities are removed from the gas because they're trying to get it as pure, as, uh, as pure methane as possible. And also the gas is cooled. It's cooled to minus 259 degrees Fahrenheit and where it, it turns to liquid. So I did a quick calculation and for example if this whole room were filled with natural gas and you put it into one of these trains, you'd have probably eight or nine hundred gallons liquid of, 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 of <coughs> natural gas, which is, the LNG is still gas, but it's gas in liquid form. And a lot of people are confused because the energy, the LNG people try to make the case that it's liquid. Look, you know, you can drink it, you can do all these things with it. Well, as long as it's in a liquid state, which I, well, I just sent an email to Mythbusters because I don't believe that experiment that they showed online. Uh, um, so anyway, uh, I have a, a couple of little uh, samples here I want to show you. Oh, I'm losing my flammable gas. <laughs> it's all over the place. Okay, watch it. It was just caught. So LNG is odorless, tasteless, colorless. Probably looks like this. And I have a sad face on this bottle because uh, LNG doesn't like natural gas doesn't like being in liquid state. All it wants to do is go back to being a gas. And so that's the problem. That's the problem when you're transporting liquefied natural gas. If the container is breached, uh, you have a, a flammable vapor gas cloud form, and if it reaches the right ratio, 15% of gas to oxygen, and it finds an ignition source, and that can be static electricity, you have a flash fire. Now, just as my, my little uh, vapor cloud's been falling all over the place, that's kind of what happens. Uh, because of the uh, flammable gas vapor, can, the cloud can be blown around by the wind. Um, there's a, a scientist, Jerry Havens, out when they were planning on putting in a big LNG facility in Washington, California, and he said that one of these clouds could actually travel six miles before it ignited something. Uh, so one of the problems with, well, several problems with these facilities, but anyway, so you kind of now, you know more, people in this room now know more about LNG than the Florida Department of Agriculture. <laughs> the agency, no, don't laugh, the agency that is tasked with, um, with uh, regulating LNG, I have emails I can show you, they don't know what it is. Not very encouraging. So anyway, so you get this brilliant idea, you're going to make million dollars, you're going to be rich playing with LNG. Well, LNG is regulated. There's an actual code of federal regulations. It's called Title 49. And I have a copy of it here. And I can imagine that these small scale facilities like the ones that Fortress is, uh, has constructed in, in the high area of out in Miami, and they plan to build one in Titusville, and Strom Incorporated has one plan for Crystal River. They probably looked at these and they said, there is no way we're going to be able to meet all the requirements because our sites are too small. 
So anyway, that's one of the problems. With LNG facilities, you have to have enough land so that if there's a fire, that heat from that fire, like fire from a camp, the heat from a campfire, that heat cannot migrate off your site. So you have to have a lot of land. They're putting these facilities on like 12 acres, uh, Strong and Crystal River, 15 acres, uh, Titusville, 22 acres. It's ridiculous. So now we talked about the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Five member board, member commission is appointed by the president. They voted recently, within the last year or so, they voted to disclaim jurisdiction over these facilities. Even though by congressional order, they are responsible for the siting, construction, operation, and maintenance of these facilities. And one of the commissioners made very strong arguments why it was stupid for them to disclaim jurisdiction. And one of the things he said was, we don't know, there are too many uncertainties because they disclaim jurisdiction. How is it going to leave people like us? Well, I'll tell you, every facility that where the Department of Energy has authorized export, there are legal problems, legal issues with every one of those facilities. And if we wanted to stop this, we could. But we need, we need obviously, money for attorney's fees. And I'm not here soliciting. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, that's what uh, Norman Day had uh, uh, complained about that. Um, so we talked about the, the Department of Energy again authorizes the export of LNG facilities. And these facilities are telling the DOE that they have a categorical exclusion from NEPA. Um, and it's all mis misapplication of the rules. Uh, there were so many, so many uh, things that could be challenged, including the fact of that the question whether exporting natural gas is um, in, in satisfy the need for pu public necessity. It's supposed to show that there's a public necessity to do this. I don't see where the public necessity is. We just, between um, February and July of this year, we exported 540,000 gallons of LNG to Barbados. Mm. Now, how is that helping? Uh, where's the public necessity there? And there isn't a legal argument that could be made, but nobody's made it, because nobody's challenged this. One of the problems is nobody even knows this is going on, <coughs> beside me. And now you. Um, so, okay, so third disclaim jurisdiction. Okay, so who now is making sure that the federal law is complied with? And it's a very, you can look it up, Title 49, uh, Code of Federal Relations, Code of Federal Regulations for LNG Facilities. And so I found out after six months of research, oh, these are being regulated by the Pipeline and Hazardous Material Safety Administration uh, out of Washington, FIPSA. Uh, FIPSA. And uh, Florida is regulated by the Atlanta. We're in the Atlanta region, that southern part of uh, the country. We're under the Atlanta office. So I started calling the Atlanta office and talked to some very nice people there. And I started asking the questions about Title 49. How is it meeting the requirement for thermal radiation? How is it meeting the requirement for flammable, flammable gas vapor? What are the exclusion zones for these, for these projects? They didn't know what I was talking about. They had no idea what I was talking about. The director of the Atlanta office said, well, I don't know, and I'll have someone to get back to you, but I can already tell you, you're probably not going to like what they're going to say, because people call here all the time to complain about a pipe. <laughs> This is what I've been dealing with. I did go to a workshop in Washington, D.C., and uh, I found out uh, that the facility that they're planning to build, build in Titusville, this is Fortress, American Marketing Energy, Fortress Investment Group, hedge fund. They're not an energy company. That's one of the problems FIPS is having, that we have non-energy companies building these facilities. They don't, they don't know the rules, or they're pretending they don't know the rules. And they, have to, and they have to be educated. But anyway, I found out that, oh, if the Titusville facility is built, they're going to be a violation of uh, Title 49, Section 193, uh, 2155B, which says you can't have an airport within one mile of a runway. So I actually went to Titusville, organized some neighbors, just like we're doing here, and uh, found a lawyer in Stewart, and we did file a, a complaint with them so that we want to make sure that that they hold uh, Fortress's feet to the fire. We don't want that facility built. Now Fortress has applied for a variance from this regulation. Yeah. It's crazy. They're not supposed to be putting these facilities in populated areas. But then I get into uh, transporting LNG. I'm going to wrap up. 
uh, I have a, did you send, I have a picture of an ISO container. This is how they're getting away with it. Um, it's going around. You can see what it looks like. This, this is a 10,000 to 12,000 gallon thermos bottle. That's what it is. It's a thermos bottle. And they will be uh, truck or rail mounted because that's the scheme uh, to uh, double stack containers of this stuff and run it up and down the coast from Miami to Jacksonville. And uh, we've been fighting a commuter rail in the Treasure Coast called Old Aboard Florida. And they need, they're calling it its Fortress. It's another Fortress company. They need track to connect Cocoa with Orlando. Now, now you've got a straight shot to the deep uh, water uh, port of Tampa. So um, that's basically all I have to, I have to say. Uh, we can stop these things. I do believe if we wanted to, I was going to show you a PowerPoint presentation that was done by the Martin County Fire Rescue. Uh, I had been complaining to the county that this commuter rail was really about freight with the fire natural gas. They finally believed me. Uh, they had their fire at the rescue department do a study and they looked at what would happen if there were a rail accident with a four inch hole. And they looked at different rail intersections at different places in the uh, Stewart, uh, downtown Stewart area. And it showed a thousand people dead instantly, people critically injured within uh, a couple of miles. of so very, very serious, very frightening. We're going to have 48 trucks a day coming out of our Floridian facility in Martin County. Um, so now we'll just power people. We have to stop this, and we, we can't stop it. Thank what do you. you. Say it can't be within a, a mile of a airport. 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 It can't be within one mile of an airport runway. What can't be? The, the LNG facility. Okay, that's what you said. LNG facility, yeah. Oh, and I calculated we're exporting 2.3 billion gallons have been already approved by the Department of Energy to export uh, annually from, from Florida. Outrageous. $10 a gallon, do the math. They're exporting everywhere. Fair trade agreement, non-fair trade agreement, nations of Caribbean, Latin America. Uh, they're planning to, some of it's going to Asia, it's going all over the world. And these facilities are not legal. They're, they're violating federal law. And this is what I've been fighting. I've been trying to do it alone, but now I've got walls and groups, thank God. Oh, well, they're putting an LNG facility within a mile of an airport. Is that right? They, they want to. Okay. okay. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I highly recommend that during this little break we're going to have, we're going to have a five minute break here so that if you need to use the restroom, uh, you can you know, uh, get her information, share information, share your contact information. I'm going to turn the camera off during the break and we are going to have um, also one minute announcements. So um, we're going to have a little five minute break and then we're going to have some one minute announcements and then when the announcements are done, we're going to turn the camera back on and we're going to hear the first one from our Santa Fe River. Um, but that will be about um, a couple minutes after 8. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 